from New York City, Comedy Central presents Eugene Merman. Hi. That felt nice. We should each take turns. Uh, I, I live in Brooklyn, and, um, yeah. I was on the street, and I ran into the ex-boyfriend of an acquaintance from college, and I wish that it was okay in our culture to look at people and just be like, I know you! <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> but you can't. <laughs> You have to talk. Um, so I decided that I would just make stuff up about how things are going. <laughs> and he, he was like, so where do you live? And I was like, oh, I live here in Brooklyn with Harrison Ford. <laughs> and uh, and I'm, I, I kill horses. I'm a horse assassin. <laughs> you know, it's a good job, good union. <laughs> I was thinking about truth or dare and what the first dare was. And I bet the first dare is probably a caveman daring a cave woman to throw a burning stick at a monster. <laughs> and I bet she was like, okay, truth. <laughs> and I bet he was like, what's your biggest fantasy? <laughs> and I bet she was like, agriculture. <laughs> A lot of people think that uh, kids say the darndest things. <laughs> but so would you if you had no education. <laughs> you'd, just be, you'd just be like, I am bike cheese. Because you wouldn't know what words were. I don't have a kid, but I think that I would be a good father, you know, especially if my baby liked to go out drinking. <laughs> <I'd> be... <laughs> when, I was, when I was growing up from sixth to 12th grade, I was, I was in special ed. And it's true. They put me in special ed because they thought I was slow. But I stayed in special ed for the ladies. <laughs> this, the story though of uh, how, which is sadly true, of how I was put into special ed was that in sixth grade, I had to do a book report. And I was like, book report, got it. And then <laughs> three weeks later, I came in dressed as Bill Cosby. And, but not from the Cosby show, I saw him uh, from I Spy. And also, uh, I was dressed as a cowboy because I once saw him dressed as a cowboy. But I wasn't in blackface, I wasn't crazy. You know, so I came in dressed as a cowboy and I was like, I'm Bill Cosby. And, and then I lip sang his stand-up comedy for five minutes. And the teacher, and this is the best part, the teacher was like, you get an A plus, but you have to see a doctor. I used to, uh, I used to temp at Fidelity with the, they sell the money. And uh, I used to answer their phones, but I'd answer them in my movie phone voice. So I'd be like, welcome to Fidelity. This is Eugene Merman. How can I help you? And I heard this woman go, oh, another machine. <laughs> and I went, I am not a machine. <laughs> and she was like, robots are alive. <laughs> I found an iPod in a cab and I called Apple to return it to the person. And uh, Apple wouldn't give me his information because what if I rape him? 
that was their tone. <laughs> so I gave them mine, and a few days later, and you know, uh, you know, the guy called me, and uh, he was like, that's so nice, and I'm like, you know, no problem. He's like, no, it's really nice. And the truth is, it is. It was a pretty nice thing I did. It's probably the nicest thing anyone's done since the Underground Railroad. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know, no problem. Just come meet me in the city and I'll give you your iPod. And then right when I got off the phone, I just wanted to call him right back and be like, the plans have changed. <laughs> give him a run around. Just be like, I said no cops. <laughs> I, was, I was in Vancouver in Canada. <laughs> well, I was in Vancouver and I was in what I was told was the poorest neighborhood in North America which I find very hard to believe because has anyone here ever been to Detroit? <laughs> it looks like it's been attacked and it has by the economy but one of the best things I found out about Detroit is that bears have started returning to the city. <laughs> like, like a ban at the outskirts of town, abandoned houses, bears. When bears are gentrifying your neighborhood <laughs> and opening Thai restaurants, it's a poor neighborhood. Does anybody here know what to do if a bear attacks? Fake death. Fake death? I think you mean play dead, not fake death. I don't believe you mean like, hold on, bear. I'm going to pretend to take poison and do a little play for you. And the bear is like, that was beautiful. <laughs> a lot of people do think you're supposed to play dead, which is not what you're supposed to do. And the best thing about playing dead is that's like a rumor that bears spread. <laughs> I don't know how bears did it. Bears have no propaganda that I know of. There's a lot of ads on TV for like categories of things like uh, milk and cheese and just and pork and things in general. Like we're ever gonna forget about cheese. We're not. Um, but I love that, so what I wanted to do is make ads for something that I love and try to sell uh, shapes. So I'm gonna go over here. Oh, you can still hear me. I, I got to make a wish, and uh, a wizard granted me a voice like God. That's So these are some of my ads for shapes that I'm gonna sell. This is an ad for a circle. Now that's a shape. Square, the other rectangle. Triangle, hot three-way action. Heart. I am a triangle with an ass on top. <laughs> Please help. And then finally, <laughs> begun. Let's party. <laughs> I'm going to sell a lot of <laughs> guns. So I've, uh, I've always wanted to start an art movement, um, and so I have, and I don't have a name for it, but I do have one rule, which is before I make any painting in this art form, I have to go outside and I have to yell, society, ready your brain mouth for my mind <laughs> And then I'm ready. So I wanted to tell you the titles of some of these. The one in the corner is, uh, that's the religious right throwing heaven at China. 
That one is uh, television news throwing up on math. <laughs> this one, a personal favorite, that's uh, Karl Rove throwing his own balls at the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> And if this is airing in the future and no one knows who Karl Rove is, he's the reason you all live underground. <laughs> I was in an elevator that wasn't that big. It was about this big, maybe a little bigger. And uh, it was full of people, and this guy... Uh, sarcastically, because it didn't really make sense, goes, there are bigger elevators than this in Russia. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That's not one of the pre-agreed upon stereotypes <laughs> of Russia. You know, you have uh, long lines and it's cold there, but you can't just make up random information <laughs> and say it sarcastically and have it make sense. You can't just be like, I went out on a date with this Jewish girl. She was more rude than a wolf cat. <laughs> An animal I've made up and decided is rude. <laughs> I called Amtrak to uh, get a ticket and they have a bunch of questions that they ask you and one of the questions is, are you 65 or better? That's the wrong word for the thing you mean. That's condescending and insulting to old people. Like they're gonna be like, yay, I'm better. I never saw it that way. I fly a lot, and uh, I was just in, in Canada, and whenever I fly, I bring this with me, um, which I guess now is illegal, but the thing about it is that it's not really shaving cream, it actually has a false bottom. And uh, it's just full of goodies, and also has a letter to the security people if they find it. But here's um, some of what it has. I have a little thing of mouthwash full of tequila. I snuck a... Uh, condom to Canada, and I snuck it back. <laughs> yeah. And then I also have a picture of the old Prez. Tequila, a condom, and a Prez. <laughs> and then a letter in case, of course, this is all found. So, dear Transportation Security Administration agent, please find in my fake can of shaving cream several incongruous items. These items are meant to be funny and not dangerous. Please let me pass. I don't have a bomb. I know I am not allowed to joke about having a bomb, which is why I spelled it B-A-L-M. As far as I know, homonyms are allowed on planes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> mm. Somebody spilled tequila on the stage. Now I know what it feels like to be the who. <laughs> it feels awesome. <laughs> um, I, was, uh, I was talking to this girl and she said to me, she was like, oh, it's okay for me to say because my brother is gay. That is a terrible excuse. Just because you know somebody, you can't use a slur. Like, for me, it's okay to say f but that's because I'm full of hate. <laughs> it's 
just an expression of that hatred. There's, it's, there's also, um, there's this billboard in my neighborhood and it says, uh, don't leave a baby anywhere. <laughs> Which is true. I imagine the first rule of baby <laughs> is to not leave it in the street. <laughs> you know, don't even like leave it with a knife or a sword, even Excalibur. <laughs> you know, and be like, baby, if anybody comes, you get them. <laughs> but it made me want to make my own obvious billboards, and so I have. <laughs> and here they are. <laughs> Don't throw a baby at anything, even a burglar. <laughs> Don't crap in an envelope and mail it to yourself. <laughs> Why would you? Try not to wake up on fire. <laughs> Do not threaten to steal a cop's penis. And then finally, if you start a band, don't call it Huey Lewis in the News. There is already a band with that name. I get um, a lot of emails from bands that I don't know, and bands I don't really need to know. You know, I'll get like, happy birthday from Art of Chaos. Like, really, Art of Chaos? You took time to wish me happy birthday while you're covered in blood? Thanks, but I wanted to um, read a message here. I'll be right back. Be back. Okay. Uh, but I wanted to read a message I got from a band on MySpace, a band called Hijinks. And they're spelled, it's a capital H, little y, capital J, in the middle of a word? <laughs> they're so rock and roll, they're like, F you, strunken white and your elements of style. <laughs> we piss on them. So I'm gonna read the message they sent me and the message I wrote back. So here it is. Subject, BB King's party. Hey there, my name is Bryce, I'm 22 and I live on Long Island at home with my parents because I'm a poor musician, but mom's at school and she makes good food, so it's all good. <laughs> Thanks, Bryce. I was gonna say, how is your mom's cooking? but I didn't know who you were. <laughs> I'm excited because my band High Jinx is gonna be playing in Manhattan at BB King's in Times Square. Ooh. <laughs> we're opening for Badfish. They're an awesome sublime tribute band. <laughs> Even if it was sublime, why tell me? My interests are soup and backgammon. <laughs> but we're an original band. We sound like Maroon 5 and Santana put together. <laughs> I didn't even know that technology existed. <laughs> They've mastered it. Let's see what they, what they sound like. Thanks for giving me the time to come up with the line. Because you know I'm all about me, showing you a good time. That's enough. And that, if, if you are ever about to orgasm, think of that song. <laughs> Sorry, baseball. <laughs> so. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the message I sent back. Thanks for the message. Your band sounds really cool. I do live in New York and would love to come out. Just a quick FYI, I mostly go to shows to <laughs> people. I'm not into music, but I love to send my <laughs> on vacations. And you know my favorite vacation spot? Blah, 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 your mouth. <laughs> JK. <laughs> Any hoozle. <laughs> do you guys have a dark side? I do. <laughs> the worst thing I've done is crap on a cat in its sleep. I know, it's pretty bad. 
but this cat was a neocon. Anyway, good luck with your band, and if you guys need a place to crash, me too. I don't have a home. Thank you all so much. Thank you.